Like most software environments for developing video games, Nestmaker is split into a project hierarchy and a workspace area. In the hierarchy, you have a basic folder structure of the elements in your game for things such as graphic assets and sounds, as well as clickable links to open various editors such as the pixel editor or the HUD editor. If you see a plus sign next to one of these icons, it means that it is a folder containing more items. By clicking on the plus sign, you can open the folder to see its contents. Clicking on the minus sign will collapse the folder. Generally, when you select an element, a property window opens in the workspace area. This property window shows you the details for that element. At the top of the tool are standard program menus. These menus can change slightly to reflect the window currently active in the workspace. For instance, when using the pixel editor, a menu item related to the pixel editor appears with choices specific to that interface. To start a new project in Nestmaker, navigate to the File menu. When you select New, you will be presented with a few options for graphics. By default, Nestmaker uses graphics stored in the Graphic Assets folder. You can think of these as your template graphics. By checking Use Existing Tile Sets, you will be editing those template graphics directly. However, for most new game projects, a user will likely want to create a unique folder for a new game. Choosing the Create Blank Tile Sets option will create blank graphics needed by Nestmaker in a user named folder. Choosing Create Default Tile Sets will copy the existing graphic assets into a new user named folder, preserving those in the main graphic assets folder and allowing you to edit a copy of those graphics. For this example, we will create blank tile sets and name their folder My New Game. Once your graphic assets have been set up, I recommend saving your project. Go to the File menu, choose Save As, and navigate to a logical save folder. I usually use a folder at the root called Project, but you don't have to. Also, I usually name the project the same as the Graphics folder, however that also is not required. Once saved, you will see the name of the current project appear at the top of the window. Nestmaker is essentially a program that organizes assembly language scripts and allows a user to edit and rewrite common parts of those scripts from an intuitive graphic user interface. To better understand this, we can look at the project settings under the project menu. The first tab that we see here is for project labels. These labels have no actual effect on the code being run, but are for easier workflow for the user. For instance, the first selectable option is tile types and you will see 16 editable values. Here, you can see the names of the tile collisions that will be exposed in the tool. Since you can change the behaviors of the tiles to fit your game's needs, here you can change the name of the tile type to something that better represents how you will use the tile type in your game. For instance, my third tile may be player death tile type, while perhaps you might have no need for this tile type and might instead make tile type 3 a warp tile. This is where you can declare its name to be exposed in the tool. To rename it, simply click on it and edit its value. In a moment, we'll come back to look at defining the script that controls it, but first, let's see what this change actually accomplished. If we go to Graphics Banks, Graphics Bank 1, and Assets, this is where you can define tiles, assign the graphics, palette, and the collision information. If you look at the drop-down list that defines collision, you will now see the new name we gave the tile type has replaced player death as the third option. Right now we haven't changed the script, only its label. So right now, even though it's called warp tile, it will still behave as a death script. Let's change that now. Go back to the project settings window, navigate to the project settings, and click on the script settings tab. This interface is the most powerful part of the program. Here, you assign which ASM scripts will compile with your game, which allows for infinite possibilities of the kind of game that can be made through Nestmaker. Selecting a script and clicking Change will show you the current settings for that game component. For instance, in this example, we see a script called Physics. This is simply a name reference in the tool. Where it says Define is what's important. It is the part used in the code to tie the user-selected script to the final compiled game engine. 
To see where this information is being used, you can minimize NestMaker, open your root folder, navigate to Game Engine Data, Game Data, Code Targets. This list automatically generates every time you export your game based on the settings that you selected. You'll notice the first item is the defined value that we just saw in the tool, set to be equal to the script path that we just saw in the tool. And to see where this is actually used in the scripts, you can navigate to Game Engine Data, Routines, System, Calculate, ACC, and Speed. You can see here, whatever script was defined by the tool will now be used to determine how the physics work in the game. Back in NestMaker, we can change which script will be called by the physics label by navigating to a new script and double-clicking on it. This is where you'll be able to, for instance, change the physics of your game to behave like a platformer rather than a top-down adventure game by selecting a physics code that respects gravity. Advanced users can directly edit the assembly code for the chosen script as well by clicking on Edit. Doing this will open the current script in the user's default code editor. For those curious about experimenting with ASM, this provides a great opportunity to combine script selection and code editing. You can make a copy of a particular code and begin altering it. Then, if you somehow don't like your changes, you can easily simply just reassign the script back to the original iteration. Also, because different types of games may require different numbers of script defines, users can add new script definitions, which then compile into that code targets file and can easily be inserted into the code to give you the easy ability to edit and choose variations. To look at an example of this, let's look at a tile collision script. Minimize NestMaker and navigate to Game Engine Data, Routines, System, Tile Types. Here you will see the 16 different tile types. When a collision happens, the engine determines which type of tile the object collided with and runs that correlating code. Inside, we'd expect to find the assembly code for the intended behavior, but instead, we see that it includes a define for tile 00. So if we return to NestMaker, we notice there is no script define set up for tile 00. This is where we can add a new define by clicking the Add button. Again, the name is just a display name. The define would be tile 00, and we would leave the script empty for a moment. Now, to set the behavior for tile 00, we would navigate to the script that we want to use. A good place to find tile scripts is user scripts, basic scripts, tile scripts. For tile 00, the default tile, we would probably use the null tile walkable. This is the script for the areas that essentially have no collision, but you could just as easily set it to solid or win or warp. And if you remember earlier, we set the label for the third tile type to be named warp instead of death. If we made a define for tile 00, tile 01, and tile 02, there's where we could define that that third tile type should run the warp2 screen rather than the death code. All of this can be a little bit confusing though. For instance, right now our code is looking for tile definitions for all 16 tiles, but you'll notice our script defines don't have them listed. That means those scripts will not be able to run and we get a long string of errors upon trying to run our game. This is why we've developed the module system. The module allows you to save script defines, variables, and labels for your game. Let's remove that practice tile zero define that we made and instead, load the included module for the basic engine. Close Project Settings, go to Project, Import Module. In your root folder, you should see a folder called Modules. There you will find the basic module. Opening that file will give you a dialog window of what will be imported. Hit OK and return to your Script Settings property window. You can now see that there are many more definitions, including tile types, AI, and power-up scripts. Like we looked at with Tile00, the includes for these are already in place for the basic engine. So now, in order to change what AI your game uses, or tile behavior, or what power-ups do, it is just a matter of pointing the defines to different scripts, or editing the existing script. 
As you become more advanced, you may choose to add script defines and call those defines in code for easy variability and editing. When you do, you can create your own modules by going into the project window and choosing export module. Let's take a moment to set up our labels for real using the defaults that imported with the basic module. If you open your script settings, you'll see that tile types 0 through 4 are set and the rest are set to null values. You'll also see that AI 0 through 3 are set and the rest are set to null values. Tile 0 is walkable, tile 1 is solid, tile 2 is death, tile 3 is warp, and tile 4 is win. Action 0 is null, action 1 is all 8 directions, action 2 is stop, and action 3 is left right movement. Let's set our labels to match. Go to Project Labels and click Tile Types. There, change the names appropriately. And for those that have labels that were not defined, you can simply write in a value of unused so you don't accidentally think that your label is how that tile will actually behave. Then do the same with action types. This already may be set up, but it is worth checking to be sure. Nestmaker comes packaged with a very simple bare bones emulator created by Shiru, designed specifically for quick Nestmaker testing. However, it is likely that you will want to eventually use a more robust emulator. We recommend FCEUX for its debugging potential, but any emulator that can recognize Mapper 30 will work. To set your default emulator, go to Project, Project Settings, and then click on the Emulator tab. Use the picker to find the emulator on your computer. Then, you will use the Working Folder Picker to find the game.nes file for your current project. Navigate to the Root, Game Engine Data, and find the game.nes file. Double click on that file, and it will automatically link the ROM location and folder. Now, when you test your game, it will use your chosen emulator to run it. Please be aware that any time you make a new project, you will have to reset this. Also, if you change the folder structure of your game in any way, like moving it all into a new folder, or changing the name of the root folder, you will have to reset this. Now, you should have a clear understanding of the foundations of Nestmaker, how it works, how to set up your project, as well as how to customize it to fit your individual game. Hopefully, this demonstrates that what can be accomplished through Nestmaker will be infinitely expandable as the community grows and the underlying code resources develop. Now that we have covered the basics of the interface, we are ready to begin designing our first game using the basic module.